Let me just start off by saying thank you to everyone for over 100,000 views and 5,000 subs. Like, what the heck? When I uploaded that Fedosia animatic, I really didn't think it would do well. I hadn't felt really all that proud of it, but I was just telling myself to just get it finished and to just try my best, so... It, it didn't really feel like my best, but thank you so much because that was some desperately needed validation when I was feeling not super epic about um, my work, so thank you. Um, but I also know the truth. I know why you all really watched it. Don't lie to me. Anyway, clearly you all greatly enjoyed seeing just a snippet of Sia's story, and many people were asking for more lore or art, so here's this. Um, I also have a very active Twitter where I post pretty much all of my art and insane ramblings about characters, both my own and uh, from media, so if you want to see more of my stuff but faster, I would suggest checking me on Twitter or over on Twitch. Uh, my schedule is kind of utter crap right now in terms of streaming, but I'm hoping that that will change with the new year. Okay, boring stuff over, let's hop into talking about my lovely murderous dragon wife. I'm not gonna totally rehash the things that happened in the animatic. The animatic actually is just a very small part of the story that starts Sia's like longer plot into motion. Um, the timeline for her is actually like it spans from all the way to like a medieval magic era um, from her birth country called Drania to thousands of years in the future into a technologically advanced sci-fi era um, because she's immortal. Um, some people in the comments of the animatic video discussed that they thought either she was the dragon or that there was a separate dragon that she made a pact with, and both are technically right. Sia is a sorceress, so she was born with innate magic, um, but she ended up being picked to be the high priestess of her country's main religion that revolved around an ancient dragon named Phokobos. Phokobos is kind of a nonchalant, sleepy loser. He never really wanted to be involved in being anybody's god, uh, but he felt guilty over the fact that like a whole country of people had latched onto him, so he loosely worked with the religious leaders when he felt it was right. You know, answering prayers and doing miracles and giving power or whatever. When Sia came along, she was really enthusiastic about being uh, the figurehead for the religion, so she was much more of a symbol by the end of this like time period uh, for her religion than Phokobos was. And Phokobos didn't really care, he actually preferred it. And when she asked for more power, for him to do things that she couldn't occasionally, he really didn't mind and he didn't see any harm initially. So some of her power is drawn from him, yes, in like a pact sort of sense, but a lot of her power is also just from herself. At the end of the animatic video, Sia shapeshifts herself into a dragon mostly out of familiarity with the form itself. Like, why not just transform into a giant fuck-off dragon if your religion is all about dragons? For reasons I'll probably expand upon another time, Sia ends up actually destroying all of Drania in a fit of rage, pretty shortly after the events of the animatic. She realizes that she never really wanted to be in the role, and that she was groomed from childhood to basically be the Madonna whore complex just personified. The only part about any of it that she liked was the love and admiration from the people of her country, but after a while that wasn't enough for her anymore. She craves actual genuine connection, and after the one dude that she was into didn't stick up for her to his wife uh, when he was the one who wanted to cheat with her, she kind of gave up on that too.
Sia eventually gets stopped in her rampage and trapped inside of a magic mirror for a few millennia until it breaks, and then she's thrust into a newer, more advanced age. This is where I like to write her story the most. She's an ancient power in the shape of a traumatized woman trying to figure out what she wants and her place in a world where gods and magic are largely forgotten about or very weakened. So what does she do? She acts selfishly, purely on whims. She uses her magic to acquire all the trappings of a regular human woman, like money and ID papers and books on how computers work, and then sets on a mission to satisfy her millennia's old bitterness and female rage in the best way possible, murder. She slinks around fancy bars and parties, lies through her teeth to everyone she meets, and lures men that even slightly remind her of her past alone and rips them apart. It's very girl boss. Basically, if you remember anything from this video about her character, you just gotta remember that her story is about female rage over the positions that women have been both deified and demonized for, despite being forced into them throughout history, when all they truly want is the dignity to be allowed to be human and flawed and still loved. I started designing Sia in 2019. Originally, she had a lot more patterning on her body, and she was more cute and cartoony. Over time, I've given her a more human disguise appearance because she can't always walk around with the elven ears and giant horns and tail. I've clearly never settled on an outfit design for her that I was satisfied with. I've tried a lot of different routes, a lot of different sources of inspiration, but to this day, I'm still kind of indecisive. I just go with whatever's on my mind at this point. She's a magic lady, so she can shapeshift, and if I feel some days like giving her a more monstrous, you know, face and body, then other days not so monstrous, then I can do that, because I'm God and I'm in charge of the things that I make. Anyway, here we go. Her updated reference sheet is all done. I hung out and called with friends while working on this and they cracked me up the whole time with barking and simping over her. She's definitely a fan favorite, pretty universally. I hope to make a lot more content in the next year. Probably including her, but also my other original characters. But I'm gonna be a bit busy over this holiday with family stuff and my regular content on Twitter and Twitch, so again, please check me out on Twitter and Twitch if you were looking for more of my work. Thank you so much again for all the love. You guys are so sweet. I loved reading all of your comments and theories and ideas. And thank you so much to everybody who's followed and, you know, looked at my other social pages. I just, I'm really grateful. Thank you so, so much. Um, and I hope you guys have a great holiday. Bye.